everybody. Happy New Year. Dr. Shannon PT here. Going to start off um, with our new video segments called the Need to Know in Five. And it's basically a whole bunch of um, short need to know um, about all kinds of different lifestyle, baby, work things um, in five minutes or less. So um, thank you for everybody that's reached out over the years with your questions on social media and um, on the emails. We figured this would be a great way for us to give you a little more um, hands-on information to a lot of the questions that you ask. So our first um, topic today that we're going to look at is why use baby gear? As a physical therapist and an inventor, this is a question I get asked a lot. And so um, I feel like this is a great way to kind of start off some of our segments. So the um, example that I like to use is for a child in sitting. Um, that is a really good skill that parents can often identify um, when their child is sitting. And so I'll ask them questions like, well, can your child sit? And they often respond with, yes, my child sits wonderfully. They can sit for a long time. And then my next question is, great, well, are they sitting independently or are they sitting in something or is something being used to help support or keep them up? And so this is a really big, um, important distinction to be aware of when your child's going through their developmental skills and understanding how the baby gear can um, possibly be um, supportive or restrictive on their development depending on how and when it's used. There's lots of different baby gear out there that can help a child through all different phases of development. A lot of them do the same thing, maybe a little differences in features, but once you understand how the baby gear operates to um, support your child, you'll be able to better understand how to use it throughout your child's day to make sure that you are um, doing everything you can to promote their development versus restrict it. So we're going to use the example of a foam um, baby chair. That's a great one that most people can identify with. So if we have um, our little one sitting here, my little stick figures, so please don't laugh at me. Here's our little one sitting on the floor. And so um, a foam seat would typically come in right about here on the mid to high back, come down to about mid thigh. So we're gonna color in all of this area. And this is the foam chair. All right, so as we can see from this image here, is the child really sitting independently? No. The child is sitting in the chair and the chair is what's actually doing the sitting. You can see all of these points here that are colored in, that external um, support is what's being added onto the child to help control their trunk, their core, their pelvis, and their legs for them to be able to maintain a sitting posture. The sitting is not coming from their coordination, the muscles of their body working to keep them upright. So that's important to note and when you see a situation like this is again if the child is really sitting or is it the baby gear that's actually providing all the support for the child to be able to participate in those gross motor skills. So a great thing that you can do as far as other options to still give your baby support to work on their sitting skills but not be so restrictive is to have your little one maybe sitting on the floor with some pillows stacked up around them. Pillows are a great way to provide your little one some support on the back and side to side, but it still allow them um, a lot of ability to move around back and forth to again get that opportunity to use the muscles to be able to get them stronger to work on their core strength and their sitting posture. So that's a great way to help um, set up a little one so they're supported so they don't fall over too far to the ground, but also allow them the opportunity to move around a little bit. Another setting for sitting that I like to set up is to have your child sitting there and then to have a sibling, parent, adults sitting behind the child. This is another great way to allow something to be there, the person to be sitting behind the child. So if the child falls from side to side, you have the arms or the legs here to be able to support the child to keep them from falling all the way over to the floor. But you can also lean back a little bit to allow the child more mobility to move back and forth to again work on those um, core muscles and strength and coordination to optimize their sitting posture. 
So now that I've given you the examples here based on these three images, you're able to better decide is something with baby gear either supportive or restrictive. So something supportive is going to be like this where the child's not gonna be able to move. And if they're always in this, then you're creating a restrictive atmosphere. Versus as you progress to these other settings, it becomes less restrictive and the baby's able to move a lot more and practice their sitting skills. So then that brings you whether to use or to not use. So then you can make the decision, well, sometimes it's okay to use these more supportive setups versus other times Sometimes you need the less supportive setups and not use the baby gear to give your little one the opportunity to practice those skills. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Need to Know in 5.